Hello, and welcome to Conversations. I'm Jim Below, your host. Very pleased to have joining me today, Derek Delacorte, the, uh, let me think this through now, <laughs> Community <laughs> Services Area Administrator Correct. for the City of Ann Arbor. Correct. Spot on. What does all that mean? Uh, <laughs> It is a, a rather lengthy title. Uh, what it amounts to mostly is, is our service area deals with um, departments in the city that deal directly with the community or the residents. Um, it includes all the planning functions, uh, building or traditional building functions, uh, rental services, parks, and then we also partner with the county to do some economic development functions um, and also the city's housing commission to work with them on, on their projects. So, so the, the, those areas of service that city hall might provide where the people might walk in other than with the police and fire and ask questions or yes. try and get information and gain a better understanding of how something might be done. Yeah, we are on the first floor for a reason. Okay, uh, great. We are, we are the first department you see when you come in to City Hall. My office is in the bottom corner, so if you come in the back door, you'll, you'll, you'll run into <laughs> us immediately, and hopefully we can, we can answer or resolve just about anything you need to do when you deal with City Hall. And you've been with the city for just over a year now. Correct. What kind of background does a person who oversees community services areas have? What kind of education and what led you to this type of position? Understood. Uh, I started my, my background, my professional background started as an urban planner. Um, I have a degree in urban and regional planning, um, worked extensively in regional planning, transportation planning, uh, moved on to local municipal planning, did that for several years, um, grew that into municipal planning and economic development. Okay. Um, through management of different departments, and then ultimately a community and economic development director uh, for a local community where we oversaw building, rental, planning, all of it. So it was a gradual progress where I, I got experience in all the different disciplines um, that kind of led to the, this position in the city. Was of this Arbor. mostly in Michigan or Southeast Michigan all or all South over? All in Southeast Michigan. Oh, okay. Correct. So you're, you were f coming to Ann Arbor a year ago, you were familiar at least with the area. Oh, correct. Yeah, I went to school at Eastern Michigan as okay. well. So I spent a, a considerable amount of time in the Ipsy right. Ann Arbor area. Grew up in Southeast Michigan. Uh, my whole career has been centered in Southeast right. Michigan in, in different municipalities, mostly Oakland County previous oh, to okay. this. So. Then why Ann Arbor a year ago? Just because a position opened up? Well, n not just because a position opened up. My, my family and I were very happy in the community we were living in, and, and I was working in that community as well. Um, but the, the opportunity to work with a city like Ann Arbor, it was a larger scale community, okay. yeah. larger scale responsibilities. Um, the ability and the, and the possibility of working with the Parks Department as well was a real draw to me. It's not something I had spent a lot of time with okay. before. And the Municipal Parks Department in the city of Ann Arbor is, is a jewel. So the opportunity to do what I do in a city like Ann Arbor and get the experience with the parks and some of the other nuances of the city was just was too much for us to, to resist. <laughs> okay. So you, you come to Ann Arbor just over a year ago. Um, I guess the, the first, in my mind, obvious question is, is it what you thought it was going to be? Because sometimes <laughs> you have these ideas of, <laughs> of both what a, a new job is going to be, a new community, even mm -hmm. though you think you may know it. Mm -hmm. Has it been what you really expected? Um, in some aspects, yes. It, it's been very much what, what I expected. We did quite a bit of time and spent quite a bit of time out here. And the staff here before I came was great and given me an idea what to expect. Um, some of what was unexpected is, is the community service area and even the city was operating under an interim city manager. We were short staff right. as far as managers. So uh, the first year we've spent a lot more time bringing the appropriate staff in and staffing up um, than I probably would have expected. But that's been a great opportunity as well. I would think that would give you a, a sense of shaping, you might say, the department some. We have a new city administrator. Correct. And so working directly, you're one of, what, five areas, is it, service areas? Four. There's okay, four, four service okay. areas administrators. As far as with a new head, a new administrator, mm -hmm. their input and their vision for Ann Arbor, being able to all sort of work together, I won't say all brand new, but at least to, mm -hmm. to shape an image and development of how you want it, you would like to see Ann Arbor grow. Yeah, it, it's been within our service area uh, in itself, the opportunity to bring manage, managers in, building officials, planning managers, who share the type of vision for the service area that I have and, and I think the community has. And then also the opportunity to work with a new uh, city administrator who brings new perspective has been fantastic. Um, and the other side of that is there are long serving other uh, staff in the city that have been here for multiple of decades that have been able to provide the type of perspective and understanding and institutional knowledge you right. need to be successful. So it's been a nice balance. 
Good. Uh, in, in looking now specifically in the community service area, you, you mentioned things like planning. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Ann Arbor over the past most likely 25, 30 years has, I won't say gone back and forth on, but debate has occurred on, on how much development, what should Ann Arbor look like, mm -hmm. and specifically in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to, to issues related to development and growth in the downtown, are things fairly settled now? Because there was, uh, within council at least, and even though you are not part of the, you could say, the political aspect, mm -hmm. you have to follow what the members of council and the mayor are, are discussing. Are things settled now from your, in your mind, if someone comes and says, we want to look at a project in the downtown region of Ann Arbor with this, is it sort of open on what they might present, or in your mind, are there guidelines now that you are fairly well set? Well, there, there's certainly guidelines that are set, and, and they are always are. Whether it's settled or not is always a different question, yeah. and not new, unique to Ann Arbor. Um, you have a, a, a significant amount of public interest, even more so that may be unique yeah. to Ann Arbor, and I think it's because of the passion people have about the community, and specifically the downtown. Um, from our process, our rules are, are pretty stagnant and straightforward. You have the zoning ordinance, you have the requirements that uh, we deal with the process end of things and planning and making sure what's ever provided to the public body has been uh, vetted through that process appropriately so council has the right information they need to make a decision. That does not necessarily mean they're easy decisions for both the planning commission and city council to make on those projects. Um, and cities can always do a better job and we always strive to, sh to create a, a better common vision with the residents so as projects come forward, residents understand why they look the way they do, why they're being approved, why that process is in place. Those things can always be improved, and that's, that's really where, where our end of it is and where we want to make improvement. In certain respects, in looking at development in the, the downtown or anywhere in the city, your department, I want to say your hands are tied, but you have both local ordinances and legislation that guides what is allowed and your role is to see whether or not what is being proposed meets those ordinances, legislation, guidelines. You don't, I mean, on what grounds can the planning department say no? Well, th there are, I mean, you're absolutely right. There, there, we use the term technically compliant a lot. Right. A good portion of our job is determining technical compliance, and it's a very boring rote yeah. <laughs> type of review process. That does not mean that planners and city staff do not have areas where there is discretion, where they can strive to do better, to bring better projects forward. Right. Um, we always have that ability. You can always ask. Just because right, there's yeah. a standard um, doesn't mean that's what the only thing you have to ask for. So it's balancing uh, understanding where that line of technical compliance is and then also working to understand what it is additional, whether it's sustainability, affordable housing, things that might be outside of that compliance that the city wants to work for to improve projects and where you have the leverage and the tools necessary to create that type of flexibility. And, and I would say, and looking at that, and, and you know, you say offering suggestions or or letting developers know that you know Ann Arbor, you know, we're looking for certain, as you say, sustain, mm -hmm. uh, sustainability mm -hmm. uh, concerns. That can you could say be provided as a you might say a suggestion, but at some point, if it technically meets the standards, mm -hmm. you may approve it. And it's up to council or the planning commission, the more political decision aspect of it. So, You're so more of a, you could say, legal aspect. Man, sometimes, yeah. Certainly the, with projects and development projects partic in particular, there are ones that are where a, a property owner comes in, they're not asking for any rezonings, they're not right. asking for any discretionary decisions, they're asking for a project to be pr approved based on the zoning ordinance in place. Right. Other times they're coming in and asking for either a rezoning, um, some kind Special of flexibility, yes, yeah, flexibility, and there are mechanisms in the ordinance for the city to consider those things. They're written into the code. Do we still have planned unit development? Correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, every city has some version of a, a planned unit development ordinance, which allows the city to uh, negotiate some flexibility from the underlying zoning district in, in exchange either for mitigation for negative impacts, for desired outcomes like sustainability or affordability. And you can work with a developer on those things when you are working in that discretionary area. Is it fair to say that often in both the downtown or in neighborhoods that 
people may not be aware of what is allowed until someone proposes something they don't like? In other words, yeah, that's a, that, yeah, that's a fair, that's a fair, that, that's I mean, some of the development that's being considered along South U near the campus where Oaks Bookstore is and that whole block mm -hmm. and people become accustomed to both a, a size and scope and density without realizing that more is allowed. Oftentimes, yes. Yeah. I, I think that's fair. I think um, sometimes people don't become aware of what the zoning criteria or ordinances right. are until they see a specific project. Right. We struggle trying to get that type of interest when we're in the planning yes. phases. Getting the residents interested when the plans are being developed that are the precursors to ordinance adoption, right. which the plan sets the vision and then you adopt an ordinance and with the text. And even before you were here when there was an ongoing study of downtown and, and mm -hmm. both the scale and size and the gradual, you know, getting people to, to look at it without a specific proposal becomes more difficult because they envision things the way they are now and you know they like it and that certain respect is the the argument that some have with the library lot and the size and scope of that which is a negative to some and were you, was your department involved in that or was that all city council and that we, we will be involved now that city fact. council has made the decision to sell the property right now our process starts okay. where it where a property owner would bring in the proposed development Obviously, the sale of the property was based on council wanting to have some idea of what they were proposing to build. Right. Um, that process now, if, if the property closes, they would bring that back to us, and we would start the very, very public process of reviewing the site plans, the, the design of the building, and those will go back through the Planning Commission and City Council as well. Well, we're going to take a short break and come back uh, and look at some other, other areas that your service area administration oversees. Mm -hmm. Ask our viewers to stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. CTN Sports, bringing local sports to you.
Hello, and welcome back to Conversations. I'm speaking today with Derek Delacorte, the Community Service Area Administrator for Ann Arbor. Before the break, we talked about planning and development and that, but you mentioned that one of the things that drew you to the position in Ann Arbor was, was the parks mm -hmm. and the parks recreation, you could say, department and that. What is it about Ann Arbor and the, w the parks in Ann Arbor that really stands out in your mind that helped draw you here? Uh, I think, first of all, when I started to look into it when we were uh, talking about the job and interviewing for the job, was the sheer number. I mean, the city has over 159 parks. I think there's a park within a quarter mile, a half mile of every home in the city of Ann Arbor. You have a fantastic diversity in, in what the recreational opportunities here are in the city. Everything from swimming pools and large facilities like ice rinks and the Burr and Fuller and all those things that I've gotten to learn about since I've been here, the canoe liveries. Um, provide rep, you know, just fantastic recreational and for me learning opportunities. These are all facilities I've never had a chance to work with before. Not to mention the wide range of neighborhood parks, linear parks, the border to border trail. Um, the breadth of opportunity here in a park system uh, for a city of this size, is it was just fantastic for me to, to consider One of the things of. that is many people may not realize, and you refer to the, the diversity of the type of usage. You, you have active use parks, you've mm -hmm. got what might be considered sort of human-made parks, the, the mm -hmm. ice rinks and those things which are not natural or use of natural mm -hmm. land necessarily, but provide opportunities for people to uh, recreate in that. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the, the natural yep. sort of undeveloped land mm -hmm. areas. Do you get, you say, concerns or, you know, people never are satisfied. What do you hear about the parks that you could say people would like to see either modified or improved on? You know, we just, we just recently uh, finished the, the Parks and Recreation Plan for the city, which was adopted by council. And, and it, it was, I was stunned at the level of satisfaction people have with the community parks. You know, everybody wants, uh, we, and we just put in an additional dog park, which was right. one of the things. And that was from the previous plan and put in. Um, we really focus on maintenance and upkeep of parks and the facilities. The natural areas here are, I didn't even mention the natural areas, the fact the city and it, its, its, its efforts in stewardship in its natural areas preservations park. You have, the, the city has its own uh, uh, natural areas preservation crew that burns and right. does uh, to make sure that invasive species and other things don't come in and take over the natural areas. So it wasn't a necessarily a, a, a indication that they wanted additional services. But they wanted to see the level of service maintained and the, the operational and the maintenance of the facilities stay at a level that they've become used to as well. One of the issues in the past, I would say, five to seven, ten years, has been the maintenance. And, and the, during the late 2000s, early teens, when the, the you say, amount of money available mm -hmm. to the city had declined, and one of the one way of cutting back is not cutting grass as often, not mm -hmm. necessarily going to the parks to pick up trash as many times you know, mm -hmm. a week as maybe in the past. Do you have the sense now that the maintenance is at a, a, a level that in most cases meets the expectations of the city or are there still, there's always improvements mm -hmm. possible, but realistically, are we at a point where just maintaining the level is gonna be critical? Uh, I think maintenance is always critical because it goes to longevity as well. The better you maintain it, the longer your facilities last, whether those are hard surfaces, infrastructure, or playscapes, whatever they are. So maintenance is a critical. I do believe the level of maintenance is, is, is where it needs to be. Are there cir circumstances where we can do better? There's always circumstances where we can do better. Um, my biggest concern is that it's not the level of maintenance. is like infrastructure, like roads, like sewer. A, a lot of Ann Arbor's parks, a lot of its facilities, were constructed and built at the same time. You kind of have a depreciation curve uh, on, those, on those investments, whether, it, whether it's the pools or the playscapes or the compressor for the hockey arenas. Those things are, are reaching their lifespan and maintenance becomes more critical. And then you reach a point where maintenance is, is no longer enough. Yes, and well, you so have to start checking. Yeah, yeah. it. And, that, and that's really where after a year and I'm learning about a lot of the facilities, like I said, we have a lot of them. My initial concerns is, are we prepared going forward? The city has been had the foresight for 12 years to have a operations and a capital millage uh, for the parks, and, and we're investigating uh, that process that comes up for renewal in 18. Okay. So, and making sure we're going to have the funds to continue if those things are no longer uh, 
able to be maintained through maintenance and need we need to start talking about replacement do we have the do we have the capital available to do that and that, i guess that is sort of the the uh, reactive versus preactive or proactive mm -hmm. approach do you wait until the compressor dies mm -hmm. to potentially spend the money to replace it which potentially means a inoperable yeah, you know, whether ice shrink or whatever, until the new Correct. material comes in, or do you say, okay, it's been operating for 15 or 20, 25 years. We know in the next two to three years it's gonna die. Mm -hmm. So let us plan now to replace it mm -hmm. before it dies. Correct. Cities tend to be reactive. Set aside money. Do you get a sense that the, the council and the mayor are willing to at least consider being proactive, or are we already? No, absolutely. I think, you, I think the city of Ann Arbor um, is, is more proactive than most, especially in its parks department. I mean, I've been amazed with the, the, the longtime park director here and the staff here in, in understanding that, and their partnership with our, our operations. They share that responsibility. But yes, absolutely. Council recognized that its most recent retreat, one of the things we talked about, was updating our asset management in park and, and going out and, and evaluating all the facilities and when is that useful lifespan when does maintenance cease, cease to be the appropriate course right. of action and do we proactively look at replacement and council was very supportive of that has the department and council and mayor been ongoing discussion about the idea of urban recreational and urban parks because one of the issues dealing with the library a lot is should mm -hmm. should additional land or space be set aside for you know urban space mm -hmm. um, we have areas in downtown Ann Arbor that are identified as urban parks. Um, is that sort of an ongoing discussion, or are there plans to either enhance or make more available land area, talk to developers, mm -hmm. as you say, to have them, you know, sort of the compromise of we'll let you go an extra story up if you provide more open space at the ground floor, so to speak? Either more open space or, and, and even the most recent project, uh, it's not most likely going to be a, a publicly owned park, but there's a significant amount of public space that will be programmed similar to a park included in that, okay. in that project. So it, it strove to meet those goals. Um, when we work with new development in the downtown, one of the things they do is oftentimes they make, uh, as part of their projects, there's contributions made for the upkeep of the existing urban parks to make sure in urban public areas, to make sure those are of the highest quality and, and more importantly, programmed correctly. You have to make sure that your, your urban spaces are not only available, but programmed for use and, and, and available to the public in an So even way. if it's not uh, necessarily additional land area available for mm -hmm. park, a developer may make, as you say, a contribution, a financial uh, commitment to aid what is already around in that area. Absolutely. Yeah, and so they can, they can benefit and it helps, you might say, everyone in that yeah. sense. And I think in every, every situation almost it's been a voluntary yeah. thing from the developer because they recognize the value to their development to having urban public spaces available well programmed um, having active street fronts where it were residents and commuters it's not just the the designated urban spaces it's the sidewalk space it's the re it's the open space in the downtown how does that interact with the buildings is it is it active and lively and a draw for people to come downtown and the, that's every bit as important as, as the corner public urban park and the ann arbor downtown area is is you can say alive till 9 10 11 o'clock at night Absolutely. so it's, you've got in the spring summertime a lot of movement of people late into the mm -hmm. evening so it's not just how do you make you know space available for people as they're you know shopping or working downtown between you know eight and five but also beyond that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah absolutely I, I think um ann arbor is a, a beacon for that type of activity not only within the county but regionally and obviously is well known yeah. <laughs> nationally uh for its downtown and the activities that here the art and cultural activities uh the balance with the university and the and the programming they have um, it's something that is, it's not only a draw for residents, but companies cite it time and time again as a reason why they want to locate in the Ann Arbor area. Parks is one which, in some cases, people may not be aware or know that you have different, you might say, levels. Mm -hmm. You have the city, you've got mm -hmm. the Ann Arbor Public Schools, mm -hmm. you have the county. Mm -hmm. uh, is there conscious effort among the different groups to, to coordinate both activities, development, you know, that if the city can't provide necessarily land in an area around Ann Arbor for open space, that maybe the county can designate. 
and that ties in with the whole green space mm -hmm. and that. You know, yeah. the well, absolutely. I mean, um, I think the city is uh, its partnership with the, the school district on rec and ed and sports programming, you know, utilizing all the avail available fields, whether it's school fields or public right. fields. Um, we are constantly in, in discussions with the county park system on the border to border and, you know, trail and, and parks that are a, a expand past our judicial right. or our jurisdiction yeah people great, in correct, the correct, of correct. The city so to yep. speak and yep so we are regularly applying for and working on joint projects grants uh, and opportunities uh, 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 almost a, a regular basis well now that we only have a few minutes left and you've been here a year uh what what goals do you have for your overall service areas over the next year or what are things that you want to sort of not redirect but look at that maybe have not been looked at much in the past few years? Uh, our primary goal in the, in the, over the next year, really from the community service area, is, is better customer service and more opportunity to uh, interact with the department, whether it's issuance of a building uh, permit, paying for a plan, review of a plan, um, electronically. Uh, we okay. want to move to a more electronic system. We want to improve our efficiencies in the field doing inspection. A big part of what we do, we, we issue and inspect thousands of permits a year, yeah. whether it's an electrical permit for someone's residence or a, a new commercial building. And we'd like to equip our inspectors to be better prepared to do those inspections in the field, improving their efficiency and improving our response times um, and, and, and the availability of the inspectors. We also want to make sure that residents have every opportunity to, uh, pay, to receive permits and do things without ever having to leave their home. With it and interact with the Isn't department that, that way. Isn't that what you began with, which was <laughs> uh, your service area deals with people one on one. You're on the main floor. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I understand what you're, you're mm -hmm. saying because it is though a a balance that you want to be available for people. Yep. You want it to be I won't say as simple, but as as easy flowing for people mm -hmm. to be able to do it. But at the same time, that human sort of interaction mm -hmm. be, at sometimes becomes critical. Oh, it, it always is, and we're always going to be there. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're always going to have a need to have that one-on-one -on -one service. But for someone who's just pulling an electrical permit and yeah. doesn't have a, a lot of questions, we'd rather them be in the park than have to come <laughs> to City Hall and, and stand at the counter right. in line to receive that permit. And, and we want to be able to pay. Yeah. At that point, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So, right. Well, six months from now, what's one thing you want to say you've been able to accomplish? That's a good question. Um, it's, it's probably not the, the most uh, sexy project, but I would very much like our rental inspectors to be able to do inspections in the field in six yeah. months' time. Um, that is really what we're focused on. Um, we believe that provides a better service to, to, to the landlords and the tenants out there. So right now, that's what we're focused on. Great. Well, I thank you for joining us this mm -hmm. afternoon. I appreciate and welcome officially to the city by way of conversations. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you for the time. Great. I want to thank our viewers for joining us today and look forward to your continued support here on Conversations.